Thank you. Okay. So next topic is Amazon Aurora, which is a database service which is offered on AWS. How many of you have heard of it, of Aurora? Okay. How many have used it? Handful. Okay. So this is going to be pretty much an introduction to Aurora. So some of you who, um, all, th those of you who already use it might already know the beginning of what I'll talk about, but I'll also show some new features that maybe you're not familiar with. So um, just to set the stage, uh, Aurora is a managed database service, meaning that you can spin up a database really quickly. Um, everything is managed for you, which is similar to what we do with other databases that we offer. So there's a choice of databases, database services running on AWS, and what they have in common is that they're all managed in the sense that all of the hardware management, provisioning, patching, backups, all of those things are handled behind the scenes. All you really need to do is to create the database instance that you need, and then you just, you know, you just use it. You connect to it from your application or from your own tools. So what is different between Aurora as a database and other databases? So first of all, the most important thing is that it's MySQL and Postgres compatible, meaning that you don't need to change a single line of code if, you've, if you're using MySQL, if your application is based on MySQL or it's based on Postgres. All you need to do is you use it as a really drop-in replacement for those databases. But it's much faster and has a bunch of extra features. So sometimes you know, people ask, what's the difference between Aurora and, and a regular MySQL database? Right? So I would say, first of all, the most important thing is how it's similar to a regular MySQL database. Right? So that's maybe the even more important point, is that it's based on MySQL. It's the same code base for the most part, but with differences. So it's a drop-in replacement. You can use it just as if you were using MySQL or if you were using Postgres, but with a bunch of extra stuff. So first of all, performance and scalability. Um, performs typically up to five times faster than a regular MySQL database and up to three times faster than a regular Postgres database. And it might vary by application. It depends on what your application is doing, the profile of, of what your application does. So it's not exactly always five times faster, but many customers have seen performance gains of, or throughput gains of up to five times. So that's the first thing. Um, availability and durability. We don't have a lot of time to talk about all of this, but and I want to jump into the demo as soon as possible. But basically, the way that Aurora manages storage, the way that it manages snapshots and backups is built to be highly, uh, highly durable, meaning the chance that you'll ever lose your data is almost non-existent. And it's highly available so that your database instances are running. if. If you had any hardware failure or anything like that in your database, the failover would be very quick, meaning that you have very high availability and your application shouldn't notice that there was any kind of failure. So both availability in terms of the instances running and durability in terms of protecting your data. And then security. Um, so Aurora can take advantage of all the different security capabilities that we have, um, which you might be familiar with, with other AWS services. So in terms of encryption, in terms of access control, in terms of networking um, that, that you know, hides your instances from others that shouldn't see them, all of those things um, are all integrated with Aurora for a very secure environment. And fully managed, I kind of already said that. So it's managed by RDS, Amazon Relational Database Service. And if you're familiar with RDS, then all of the features that you get with RDS are available. So you know, does all your backups, does all of your um, you know, hardware provisioning. You can choose which instances you want, uh, many different choices of instance sizes. Um, it's, um, it runs on multi-AZ, so you can have multiple availability zones and different database instances running there. Um, and you get all those high availability and all those highly managed um, capabilities built in. Okay. So I think this is enough in terms of slides. Um, maybe if we, we can come back to something, but I'd like to just go and create an Aura instance. And I especially want to uh, highlight some of the features that we've added in the last year or so, which some of you might not be familiar with. So let's do that. OK. So AWS Management Console should be familiar to everybody. 
Um, let me go to RDS. So as I mentioned, Aurora is a managed data. It's a managed database which is managed by the Amazon RDS um, managed database uh, service. So anyone who's ever um, been, everyone who's ever used RDS will, will, you know, this will be very familiar. So in RDS in general, relational database service, you get a choice of six database engines or seven, depending on how you count. So um, straight MySQL and Postgres and MariaDB, which are open source databases. So these are just, you know, versions of those databases, the latest ones. Um, commercial databases, Oracle and SQL Server, which are much more expensive. Uh, some people still need to use Oracle or SQL Server because your application runs on it and you didn't have time. You want to move to the cloud right away, but you don't have time to change your code to run on an open source database. Or maybe you're using a third party application that you bought from someone and that's the database that they offer. They're based on Oracle or based on SQL Server. So those are also options. And you have Aurora. So let me. If I didn't, yeah. So I chose Aurora as my database, um, as my database engine. We have a few different options here. Um, you can choose MySQL and you can choose Postgres. What I'm going to choose is MySQL 5.6. Um, some of the features are a little bit different between these different versions. So I want to choose 5.6. There's a bunch of features that I want to show there. So I will go and create an in. I, I want to also mention before we move further, um, this is in, in the category of recent uh, features, um, or Aurora Global Database. That is a feature that we launched yesterday. How many of you heard the announcement? OK, a few. So that was in Andy Jassy's keynote yesterday. It was kind of brief. I mean, he mentioned it and he moved on in the database uh, part of the, of the keynote. But just for those who missed it, Basically, Aurora Global Database, what it does is it replicates your data very, very efficiently to other regions. So you can say, OK, I have a database running in, I don't know where, US East 1. And that's where my database is reading and writing. And I want to create these reader instances in, under, in other regions and have the data be replicated very, very quickly to those regions, and typically in under a second. So as soon as you turn that on, um, your databases in the other regions will have a copy of the data, which is usually no more than one second old. So two great things about that. One is you can point applications in the other regions to look at that local copy right, in the other region. So they can read really, really quickly with low latency. Um, and you can scale it in the other region as much as you want. You can create read replicas in the other region. And they don't affect what the database in the master in the primary region is doing, right? So you get read very, very quickly, scalability and high performance in other regions. Second re reason to do that is for disaster recovery, right? So if you have a copy in another region that is very, very up to date, then as soon as you have a failure, let's say that the entire region at AWS would go down. I don't think that would happen, but let's say that that happened and you, you're worried about that, then you can just you know, you can fail over to the database in the other region. And it's just maybe one second old data. So that's pretty good, right? So that's the global database uh, feature that, so go and try it. I won't show it. I won't show almost anything because I want to just go through these features as much, as many of them as I can. So let me create an instance. Um, so three interesting um, options here. How many of you have heard of parallel query or serverless? I mean, serverless in the sense of a serverless database. Serverless is everywhere in this show, right? But uh, serverless database. OK, so let me talk very briefly about those two features. And I think we'll run out of time by the time I talk about all these great features. So you can see that I like this stuff. So OK, so provisioned is simply standard database. Provisioned, what that really means is that you decide what instance size you want. So you don't provision it. I mean, you don't provision it in the sense that you go to our data center and plug in the, the server and start, you know, provisioning the server. Not in that sense, but provision in the sense that you choose what kind of instance size you want. And if you run out of and if you run out of capacity, if your database starts to get high CPU usage, then you need to move it to a bigger instance, right? So that's provision, meaning you choose um, serverless. What that means is that you can have Aurora choose the service, the instance size for you. 
So it will grow and, and, and shrink. It will basically scale up and scale down in order to match your application workload. So what you can do is you can say, start with a certain um, instance size. And if your usage starts to become really high, like your application starts hitting the database with lots of, lots of um, read and write requests, and it continues for too long, then Aurora will move your database to a bigger instance size. And it will do that pretty much instantaneously. And it can go higher and higher and higher as the load on your application grows. And then if it starts going down, then it'll start scaling down to smaller and smaller instance sizes. And that way you save money because you go to smaller instance sizes if you don't need a, a, a large instance size. Um, you can also scale it all the way down to zero if you want. That means it'll shut down your database completely if there's no activity for a certain time that you specify. Right? So then you're paying exactly zero for that database instance. It doesn't delete your data. Your data is still stored, and you still pay for the storage because that's just storage. But for the database, the running database instance, you pay exactly zero until the application starts writing again and, or reading, and then it'll start back up. And that takes about 30 seconds on average, or up to 30 seconds. So for some people, that's a great solution. Um, some people don't want to wait for 30 seconds for the first requests. You know, they don't want the first request to wait for 30 seconds and, and then, um, the, and then get, get a reply. So that's up to you. Some people like to keep the, the smallest possible instance waiting around. And then the first users, after a break, the first users will start using that small instance. And it's basically keeping that in place until it moves up to the bigger instance, right? So that's another thing that you can do. So that's Aurora Serverless. Pretty neat option. Came out about four months ago. So give it a try. Um, it's really good for if you, have, if you can't predict your application workload. Like it's, if it's kind of spiky, goes up and down, you don't want to don't wanna provision for the highest, um, you know, for the highest, for the peak load. You want it just to scale up and down according to the actual usage. Um, parallel query, let me talk very, very quickly about that. What that does is basically uses a lot of CPU power that we have in our storage layer in order to do your query. So basically what happens is that when you run a database instance, you have one instance right, that can read and write. Um, you can add read replicas, meaning that you have multiple readers. But all of that, all of that CPU power is still not, you know, it can be quite a lot, but that's nothing compared to what Aurora has at the storage layer. Because at the storage layer of, of AWS, or at least in Aurora and many other services, you have hundreds and maybe thousands of storage nodes that are serving um, the service that you're running. That's a lot of CPU power, way more than what you paid for with the, the instance that you're running. So why not use all of that CPU power in order to, uh, to help accelerate the, qu the database query that you're running? And keep in mind that if this is the storage of the, you know, where your database is stored, then it can directly read from that storage and do some of the processing of your query and then send only what's needed to your database right, to your running database instance. So where that's especially useful is if you have analytical queries. So if you're doing like full table scans on your, in your database and you have like a real, these really complex queries, then you can have Aurora just run them on the storage layer in the background, and it doesn't affect your transactions at all because this is just added CPU power that you get. And then it sends much less over the network because it's already processed a lot of that information, so there's much less network traffic and you use much more CPU power. So that's another thing you can try. Came out not too long ago, and it's called Parallel Query. OK, so let's finally create an instance. I'll just create a regular one. Um, and I don't know. Not the most secure. Um, name and password that you've ever seen. But for a demo, it's good enough. And then let's set a few more options when we get to the next screen. Did I click? Oh, sorry. I didn't select my instance class. 
So let's do um, a small R4. Sorry about that. OK. So there's a bunch of options you can, you can set when you create an Aurora database, um, how you do networking, um, whether it's publicly accessible. Let's skip some of that. Um, and I do want to show some of the more interesting options here. So first one is IAM. Um, so IAM is a, is a service um, that works across many other AWS services for the purpose of security and, and identity management. So that basically determines who can, uh, who can access your resources, and you can set permissions to users. You can do all kinds of you know, fine-grained access control. Um, and it's similar a little bit to you know, LDAP or Ac Active Directory or, or you know, systems like that um, that, can, uh, that can control access to your resources. So let's not choose that option. Um, I want to show, um, I want to talk about two other options here that are interesting, and I think that's may those are maybe some of the last things we can talk about today. First one is Backtrack. Who has heard of the Backtrack feature? OK, two or three people. Um, what Backtrack does, Backtrack was um, launched in, I think, April or May. So if you were at reInvent last year, it was not available yet. What that does is basically allows you to undo anything that you've done in your database by just moving back to a previous point in time which can be any, basically to any transaction that you, were, uh, that you were on. So basically, it just moves a pointer back and as, as, as far back as you want to keep the data. So it doesn't even use a backup. It, it's not a restore from a backup. It's, it basically just moves a bunch of pointers around in our storage system so that you move back to that point in time that you choose. So what you basically need to do, if I enable it, then what I do is I choose what the backup window would be. And you, know, you can say, I want to I keep all of the data for, let's say, 72 hours back. That means that you can go back to any point in time that you want um, in the last 72 hours. What the, the cost of the feature is basically just for the storage. So however much data back you want us to store, then you pay for, how, for that storage of your older data. So that's, that's basically what it costs. So, but other than that, you can backtrack back and forth as much as you want. There's no, like there's no cost for doing the action of, of moving back or moving forward. So a pretty neat feature, can undo mistakes, uh, useful for QA and development, a bunch of things like that. So let's turn that off. Um, sorry. And then one other thing is performance insights, which is a performance analysis of your database. So when that's running, um, you can see, and I'll show that on the next screen, and I think we'll end there. Um, I'll show how you can basically do monitoring and analysis of your database performance. So I think with that said, let's create the actual database. OK, let me go to another database which I already created earlier. OK. So this is a list of my running Aurora instances. Um, you can do all kinds of activities from here. You can shut them down. You can delete them. You can monitor them, you know, just like what you would expect with a console of you know, a database running in the cloud. Um, I do want to show the neat feature that I just talked about, which is called Performance Insights. Um, it won't be very interesting when we're looking at it now, because my database is not doing anything. right? I just created it an hour ago. So um, not much to see here, but just so you know what, uh, what it does. So basically, two interesting things. One is that it shows you performance metrics like CPU usage and um, I.O. for the database that you want to look at. So it might be similar to database monitoring tools that you've, you know, that you've used in the past. Second interesting thing is that you can look in the SQL tab. It shows you the top SQL queries and who is using the most resources, like what SQL uh, queries are uh, basically using up your resources. So you can use that in development to, you know, to, look at, to, to look at the SQL queries and optimize your queries in development and make sure that, you know, that they're optimized. And of course, in production, if your database is slow, you can come here and you can look at the top SQL queries. And there's a, a lot to say about how, this, you know, how performance insights works. 
but basically you can learn how to use it and then you can use that to, you know, to optimize your database when it's in production. Um, okay, I think we're out of time. Um, so uh, thanks very much. Um, come to the, uh, there's a databases um, station at the, um, the AWS Village, as it's called. A bunch of database people there, Aura experts and others, so come and ask questions. All right, thanks very much.